great. How are you? Great. We'll go to the mayor first. Hey, Doc, congrats on the series win. What are your overall thoughts on, I guess, the challenges Dallas has been doing? How do you guys come in throughout the series? It looks like their fans gave you a lot of trouble throughout the series. Uh, did you guys find a way, especially trying to move that to make it difficult? Yeah, I, I, thought, I mean, Dallas, I, I don't know if you ever want to have a great opponent, but uh, they are the most efficient uh, offensive team in, in, in league history, and uh, they're a hell of an organization. they got a great coach, and they have Luka and great scoring. Uh, so for us, they presented all those challenges, and um, I, was, I thought we grew through the, through the series. Um, you know, the little bit of adversity early on was very good for us. We haven't had any all year. Uh, so I look at that as good, uh, positive growth. Uh, and then I thought our guys really start focusing in on the last two games, especially with the different schemes coming out of timeouts. So, I mean, Rex and Ty did a great job. Every timeout, we tried to show them a different look, and I thought it was effective. Come over to home. How do you feel you guys are at, where, where you guys are at right now in the second round? Where you want to be at this point in the playoffs? You know, it's hard to tell because we, we keep having these guys out. Uh, you know, hopefully we can get Pat back for game one. Uh, we can get back to our normal rotations. But there was a lot of little guys. I mean, Kawhi was phenomenal throughout this whole series. I thought he was dominant. Uh, and then PG picked it up, you know, uh, greatly after the first two games. But there were so many other little uh, other things that guys did. I thought Marcus throughout was not only just a good player, he was an instigator. Uh, you know, Zoo had the playoff of his life. So Sham and Reggie makes big shots. So uh, I liked how we looked in that way that other guys contributed. Move to Andrew. Hey, Doc, uh, Kawhi's performance, particularly in the second half, I think he was 9 of 10 from the field, but it went beyond his shooting. And how do you describe the way he helped you guys really close this out? You can tell he was the one guy that was used to closing out series. You know, um, he was calm. He got us in place. We, you know, during games, you fall on a set, right? And we fell on that little elbow set for him. Uh, and he just took what was there. You know, if they didn't come, he scored. If they came, he made the right pass. So. I, I said it before the game, I was thinking I was talking to uh, um, P.J. Carlissimo, and I was telling him the one thing I didn't know, I knew he, was, he, he could pass, and I knew he may be a good passer. I didn't know he was an elite passer, uh, and that's something you don't know until you coach a guy. Charlie? Charlie, uh, you guys have been doing this with Michael, got a little opportunity there, and then finished with yeah, he played great. He was great. I mean, honestly, Charlie, we wanted to go back with him, but they stayed small, and so we just matched up with him. Uh, but Jamichael's been uh, our Swiss Army knife all year. You know, starts at the four. He started at the five. I mean, we've put them about everywhere. Yeah. Helen, where has she been? No, Helene. Helene? 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 Um, Where have you been? Um, far away. <laughs> um, just wanted to ask, you touched on it a little bit, but what to you are the best things that came out of this series for your team and that maybe leave you a little concerned? Well, nothing concerned because everything that didn't work, we can get better. Um, I think that adversity, uh, I didn't think we played well quite honestly, for the first three games. Uh, and yet, we still were two and one, you know? Um, I thought we joined the series late. I thought our intensity joined playoff intensity late. Uh, I thought our execution, like, gradually got better. Uh, so what came out of this that I loved is, you could tell by the end how much our guys value defensive and offensive execution. I don't think they believe that, that that's what you need during the playoffs. Uh, but I think Dallas got their attention for sure. Yeah, I didn't think he should have been thrown out. But listen, I'm biased, so uh, I thought he made a play on the ball uh, and he hit him on the head. It happens all game, so. 
I think it was a reputation throwout, but I, I, you just got to live with it. I love Marcus's intensity. Uh, he, uh, he's a tough guy. Like he's not backing down, and, and I love that in him. You love him. Hey Doc, I'm curious. Now that the series is over, um, what are your thoughts on Luca and then just facing him in the playoffs at 21 years old? I think I was on board with Luca a long time ago. Um, I think two years ago, or his rookie year, I said I had a man crush on him. Um, it's it's grown, so uh, he's just a terrific player. Uh, I love his toughness. Uh, I mean, we made it hard for him these last two games, and he just kept going. Um, I was waiting for him to get tired, you know, but but he didn't. He just kept playing. So um, just crazy respect for him as a player. Love him. I love his. Um, Plays with a great joy, and I love that as well. Thanks, Doc. That's all the time we have for you, man. All right. Okay. Doc Rivers expressing his admiration for that guy, Luka Doncic, who will lead this Mavericks team into what appears to be a bright future. 17 triple doubles this season. Kristaps Porzingis has the knee issue, but he should be back and healthy for next season after averaging 20 in his return from the other knee injury. Not a ton of uh, salary cap flexibility this offseason. There is cap room in 2021 looking ahead. But the season is over for the Mavericks, who rejoined the playoffs for the first time since 2016. Here is their head coach, Rick Carlisle. Go ahead with questions, Brad. Yeah, uh, Coach, I know it's still fresh, but uh, just want to get your takeaway uh, from the game and the season, Your Honor. Uh, tweeted a couple minutes ago, this is just the beginning. Well, I'm in full agreement with that. Um, it's a tough series. You know, for a lot of reasons, um, we're, we're down some of our guys, which, you know, those kinds of things are going to happen. Um, but today, the way that our guys fought and competed, um, you know, through all the ups and downs of the game, um, was something that was, uh, can make all Mavericks fans proud, makes our organization proud. Um, and we got a lot of great experience from being down here and being in the playoffs. It's, it's a different experience without the fans. Um, this morning we talked about the fact that, you know, for, for a normal game six, we'd be going home to 20,000 people and we'd have a real advantage there and we, we were gonna have to find the energy, um, you know, amongst our family that's here, um, you know, to fight and, and to give ourselves a chance. And uh, they did, they fought as hard as they possibly could. Uh, everybody was into it. And, uh, you know, you hate to lose, but uh, the effort was uh, was phenomenally good. Renee, we're done in the room, so go ahead with Zoom. Okay, um, Tim McMahon. Rick, I'm sorry I'm coming in a little late, so you, you might have been asked this, but uh, what, if anything, did you learn about Luca during this series? Well, look, he's one of the toughest players that I've ever seen in this league. And that goes back 35, 36 years. Um, he's uh, a great young player that is getting better each year. I mean, he's rookie of the year last year, and this year he's up for most improved. I mean, I, you know, I like to know if that's ever happened uh, before. And so I expect that you know he'll come back next year um, even better. You know, with some with some something new in his game, the same way that Bird and Magic and and Jordan um, and all those great players um, did every summer. Um, you know, the summer's a little different. You know, now it's going to be a fall, and you know, whenever we reconvene as a league again. But uh, you know, he has uh, an, an irrepre irrepressible enthusiasm for the game, for his teammates, and for winning. And uh, you know, today, I mean, it was it was hard getting him out of the game. Second half, we didn't do it until the very end. Um, and so, I don't know, I, we're just, we're so fortunate to have him and, uh, you know, now we've got to get our roster completely healthy um, and keep working to get the right players around him. Okay, Matt Mingle. Rick, do you feel like you guys had a great season? I know it didn't end the way you want, but considering you haven't been in the playoffs since 15. 
you have two great players. Do you feel like you had a great year nonetheless? Uh, I, I feel like we had a very productive year. Um, and a lot, a lot was accomplished. You know, it's it's hard to put your hands around everything um, at this particular moment. Um, you know, getting back to the playoffs is is very significant. Um, you know, being 11 games over 500 in the in the regular season is significant. Um, we didn't win a lot of games in the seeding games, but we went through some great experiences. We went through three or four overtime games, um, and that got us you know, ready to play the Clippers. Um, and this series was, you know, it was like a lot of playoff series. It's up and down. I mean, you know, Porzingis gets 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 ejected in three minutes into the third quarter of game one. You know, we win game two wire to wire. Um, game three, Luca goes down with the ankle, um, and we end up losing by eight. Game four, the, the team showed its resilience um, in, in – um, in a huge way, you know, getting down 21, then battling back, um, having a lead, getting to overtime, and then and then finding a way to win at the end. And and Luca, you know, put the team on his back in that game. Uh, game five is is really the only game I'm really disappointed in. And you're going to occasionally have a stinker in the playoffs where the other team plays great, and it just you just don't have have your night, uh, just don't have a good night. Um, but today. Um, you know, after being here 50 some days and going through everything that everyone went through this week, um, you know, and, and being down, you know, not not only KP but Powell and Brunson, um, not having Cauley Stein, you know, um, you know, it, it would have been uh, would have been easy for our guys to just fold up, and they didn't. They they refused to do that. They refused to do that. They fought their butts off the entire game. I thought. Uh, I thought Jamal Mosley had had a great defensive plan. He, you know, he just kept mixing things up and kept us aggressive. And um, you know, Clippers would go on a run, and, and we would we would stay um, we would stay right in their faces and make a quick run back at them. You know, and then they pulled away at the end. But uh, you know, we were we bent, but we didn't we didn't break. You know, in, in this game, and uh, and I was proud of that. Okay, two more, Dan Wilkie. Correct. After Game Five, you, you would kind of express some disappointment in, in Marcus Morris and, and the play he had with Luca. Obviously, those two guys again tonight. Well, what did you see in that play? And did you know should he have been on the court? I guess after what happened the, the game before. Look, the, the play the play speaks for itself, you know. And I, to get into speculation. About